In this video, we're going to talk about consumer and producer surplus. So consumer surplus is when a consumer's willingness to pay for a good or service is higher than the price that they actually paid. So let's say that you play the guitar and you find this guitar on eBay that you really, really want and you'd be willing to pay, you'd be willing to pay up to $800 for this guitar. But you end up in the auction, you end up actually getting the guitar, the actual price that you pay is $550. So you would have paid up to $800, but it only got bid up to $550. You were the winning bidder. And so you see here that your willingness to pay exceeds the price that you actually paid. And it exceeds it. If we were to subtract $550 from $800, we would get $250. So we would say that you have $250 of surplus, all right? You've got, your, your benefit exceeded the price that you paid by $250, okay? So now the producer surplus, we're just thinking about the amount that the producer receives minus the cost of producing the good. So let's say that there's a producer that makes drum kits, right? So they, they make drum kits for people to play the drums and stuff right for for a band so they make drum kits and let's say that it costs them let's say that it costs them three hundred dollars to produce a drum kit but they sell the drum kit they sell the drum kit for seven hundred so now we see that their minimum cost that they needed to get to break even would have been three hundred dollars but they actually get seven hundred dollars for the drum kit so we would say that the difference there, which you can think about as profit or, or however you want, that is producer surplus of $400. And so we can actually calculate the consumer surplus and the producer surplus for all the consumers and all the producers in the market, right? In this example, I just gave the, the consumer surplus of one person. We just talked about you buying a guitar on eBay, but we could think about all the different consumers and producers in the market, and we could calculate the surplus for both of those groups. And then if we were to add the consumer surplus and producer surplus for everybody, then we would have the total surplus of, of basically that's produced by having uh, transactions occur in the market. Okay, So let me give you an example. Now again, we're thinking about, let's say we've got our, our demand curve, and this is not a demand curve. We're not just talking about one person's demand uh, for whatever the good is in question. And, and let's just say that we're talking about surfboards. So let's say that this is the market for surfboards. And we're not just talking about one person's demand for surfboards, we're talking about everybody. So this demand curve, it tells us all the different uh, amounts that would be demanded at different prices, okay? And then we've got our supply curve. That's the amount that the producers of surfboards would build, be willing to supply at different, qu different quantities for different prices, right? So let's say that, so we've got our equilibrium right here. And I've, I've got a video on supply and demand if this is new to you. But when the supply curve and the demand curve intersect, that point, is our equilibrium so i'm just going to put it that's our equilibrium right there so in a free market we would have and if we can just trace this out here to a quantity of let's say a hundred thousand surfboards being produced and then we have a price of eight hundred dollars that's our equilibrium price and our equilibrium quantity now we can see that at this equilibrium price of, of eight hundred dollars there were some people in the market who would have been willing to pay more than $800, right? They would have paid more than $800 to get a surfboard. For example, right here, at this point, let's just say that that would be a price of $1,000. So there are people who would have paid $1,000, but they got the surfboard for the equilibrium price of $800. So those people got, each of them got $200 of surplus. And so how do we calculate all of the consumer surplus? Because some people would have been willing to pay $1,100, some people would have been willing to pay $850, et cetera, but no one, no one would have been willing to pay $1,200 or more because we see at $1,200, at a price of $1,200, the quantity demanded is right here at zero at a price of $1,200, nobody's demanding anything. So really, it's all this area here. This area here 
is our consumer surplus. That triangle is our consumer surplus. So it's the area below the demand curve, because again, this is our demand curve, right? So all the area, it's below the demand curve. You see that? But it's above the price. It's above the price. Here's our price, $800, okay? So this whole triangle is our consumer surplus. And we can take the area of that. We can actually calculate the number because we can see, and let, let me get rid of the thousand here so I don't, don't confuse you. The points that we really care about, if we're, if we're thinking about the area of a triangle, so we'd say, so let's say here is our consumer surplus. It's gonna be equal to one half times the base times the height of the triangle. Okay, and our base is going to be th this amount here, that distance, and that's 100,000. That's, that's 100,000 minus zero, which is 100,000. So we're going to have one half times 100,000 times the height. And the height is just going to be 1,200 minus 800. 1,200 minus 800, which is 400. If you multiply all this out, you get... $20 million is the consumer surplus. So that's our consumer surplus. And now with the producers, let's think about it with the producers. With the producers, this supply curve we can think of as the minimum supply price, right? That's the minimum amount at each at each point, given a certain amount or a certain quantity, what is the minimum price that the suppliers would demand? So here, we want all the points below the price of $800, below that price, but above the supply curve. Okay, so we want everything here. This whole area is going to be our producer surplus. There, I'll just link that there. That's our producer surplus. And so similarly, we can calculate the producer surplus because, again, in this, in this case, it's just a triangle. There will be cases where we have some kind of weird situation going on and, and you might have to divide it up and, and calculate it differently. It won't always be this easy. But in this case, just half times base times height. So we're going to have one half times the base, which is again 100,000, times the difference, the, the, the height here of this triangle is 800 minus 400 which is again $400. So in this case, it just so happens to work out that the producer surplus and the consumer surplus are exactly, exactly the same, $20 million. But we're gonna talk about all kinds of instances where the producer surplus and the consumer surplus are not the same. We're gonna have things like a, a quota on imports or a tariff or different things that they're gonna change where we have maybe so transfer where there's some of the consumer surplus is actually transferred to producers. And then we're going to have some cases where we lose some value, where we actually lose some value and nobody gets it, right? We'll have a situation where nobody's getting some section and we'll call that a deadweight loss. And so basically if we want to add up the value being created by this market, we can add the consumer surplus and the producer surplus together. We can add these two amounts. And that's $40 million. So $40 million is the total surplus. That's the total surplus. And now why is this relevant? Why do we even care what the sur surplus is? Because we can think about things like a tariff. We can think about different things that a government can do. And then we can say, how does it affect this the surplus? Because if there's some kind of government action, like a price ceiling or something like that, that comes in and takes away some of that surplus, then we can think about, wow, we've lost value as a society. And then we can also think about who are the winners and losers of a policy. Is it the consumers? Are they paying more? Are the producers losing? And so forth. And we'll talk about all that a lot more in the videos to come.